Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swiss. Uh, going through Wednesday night's matching games in this one. Uh, I can't tell you how we did on Tuesday night yet because I'm recording this kind of early. Uh, Northern Illinois is looking like a winner. They're up 24-0. Toledo Bowling Green under, I'm assuming, loses because they scored a billion points in the first half. Technically, it hasn't gone over yet, but most likely a loser. Uh, Eastern Michigan down three. There's still eight min minutes left in that. Uh, so I don't know how we did on Tuesday yet. Update. Excellent news. Ended up being a green college football day, plus 0 0.04 units. It's been 84 years. <laughs> I know it's crazy to celebrate, plus 0 0.04 units, but after the weekend I just had, hell yeah, I'm celebrating it, man. I also have a bunch of NBA bets still open. Uh, you know, the Hornets. So I like the Hornets, so I posted my ticket. Hornets plus five and a half. About 30 minutes after I post it, the line moves up to six and a half because Gordon Hayward was ruled out. And I knew there was a chance he wasn't going to play. So that wasn't a deal breaker for me. Uh, of course, it lands on six. So I got my bet in at five and a half. 30 minutes later, it moves to six and a half, lands on six. Uh, just, just perfectly congruent with how the weekend went. Uh, but yeah, so let's get it started. Two Mac game, games Wednesday night. Let's go. Welcome to the Swiss. get the source first up we got central michigan on the road in ohio here uh bobcats laying 11 points at home which is up from 10 total sitting at 46 and a half actions coming in pretty split on this one from what i can see uh starting to look like a little bit of a pros versus public setup here public leaning towards ohio with the sharp action definitely leaning towards central michigan line movement seems to be on the side of the public though from what i'm seeing it was at 10 then i saw it at 10 and a half for you for, uh, for a few days and now i'm seeing 11s out there so central michigan has owned this head-to-head -head series uh, they've taken six in a row against Ohio, dating all the way back to 2013. And check the scores out. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before. These teams have played the same exact game five, six times in a row. Look at the scores. 30-27, 30-27, 26-23, 27-20, 28-10. Uh, so there was one blowout win in there. And then 26-23 again. Playing the same exact game over and over again. Now, something to take note of here. Uh, yeah, Central Michigan has owned this head-to-head -head series six in a row, but they didn't play last year. And Ohio football was struggling for a few years before 2022, where they went to the, the conference championship last year. So beating the 2022 Ohio team would have been a lot different than beating the 2021 Ohio team. Now, unfortunately, scheduling-wise, this game doesn't really mean a ton for Ohio. Uh, they've got seven wins already. They're already bowl eligible, but they lost to Miami a couple weeks back, so they don't have the tiebreaker there. The only way they go to the conference championship again is if Miami, Ohio loses both the next two games and they win out. And Miami's got Buffalo and Ball State coming up. So this game doesn't carry a ton of weight for Ohio. Now, on the other side of the MAC, of course, Central Michigan is mathematically eliminated from the conference championship. They can't catch Toledo, but they're five and five, just one win away from a bowl game. And their final game of the season after this one is against Toledo. So they need this one badly. This win could save their season and send them to a bowl game. So right off the bat, I'm kind of leaning Central Michigan just because they need this game way more than Ohio does. Now, as far as matching these two teams up on the field, uh, if we look at the full season numbers, this Central Michigan offense is very reliant on the run game, just 94th overall offensively according to beta rank, 67th in effective rush, and all the way back at 103rd in effective pass. But we do have to give some credit to Jace Bauer. He got off to a really slow start this season, but the last two games have been solid. Through his first seven FBS games this year, five touchdowns, six picks, just a 105 passer rating. In his last two games, four touchdowns, one pick, and a 141 passer rating. He also added 140 46 yards and two touchdowns on the ground in those last two games as well and it's not like he was playing akron and kent state those two games were against northern illinois and western michigan two decent mac teams he's playing a lot better right now this will be a serious test for him though because uh, the ohio offense may have just completely fallen off from where they were last year and we'll get to that in a second but the ohio defense picked up right where it left off um, I'd still put Miami and Toledo's defense over Ohio's, but this is still one of the best defenses in the conference without a doubt. On the season, the Bobcats are 49th overall defensively, according to Beta Rank, 48th in effective rush, 66th in effective pass. Nobody's been able to run the ball on Ohio recently, uh, even in the two losses, Miami and Northern Illinois, they averaged 3.8 and 4.1 yards per carry on them, so they weren't getting the run on really. 
Um, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Jace Bauer to produce in this game. So it's a really good sign that he's coming into this one with some confidence coming off two, probably his two best games of the season. On the other side of the ball, Central Michigan's defense is a liability without a doubt. Uh, we've seen this team get lit up on the scoreboard in back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, on the season, they're 124th overall defensively, 114th in effective rush, 126th in effective pass. Western Michigan just went off on that CMU defense last week. Central Michigan was actually winning that game 28-21 with just eight minutes left. Uh, Western Michigan was able to score 17 points in the final eight minutes to win the game by 10. I had Western, well, I had Western Michigan minus three as my top bet that night. I loved every second of it. But that might not be the most fair comparison because, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, Western Michigan's offense has been better than Ohio's offense this year. This Ohio offense has been such a disappointment. After last year, I mean, a lot of people last season, a lot of people, including myself, felt that Ohio probably would have won the MAC Conference Championship game if Curtis Rourke wasn't hurt. So entering this season, they bring Curtis Rourke back at quarterback. People were thinking, including myself, that Ohio probably wins the MAC or should be one of the favorites to win the conference. This offense just isn't producing. In their last four games, Ohio's averaging just 17.3 points per game and 328 yards per game. If you like Ohio, though, this is your angle. And spoiler alerts, I don't. I'm on Central Michigan. But if you're betting Ohio, this is your angle for this offense. If you look at their last three home games, now the last one was against Miami of Ohio, and that defense is good as hell. So you can erase that one. Look at the two before that against Western Michigan and Kent State. Two bad defenses. In the Kent State game, they lit it up for 42 points. Now, you might look at the WMU game and see they only won 20 to 17, but they had 460 total yards of offense in that game. So that's your angle if you like Ohio. Their last two home games against bad defenses, they lit it up offensively. Like I said, though, I'm going to go the other way with this one. I like the way Central Michigan's been playing the last two games. I think Jace Bowers developing into a solid Mac quarterback before our eyes. Uh, he's starting to look comfortable back there. Now, do I trust the Chippewa defense to make stops against Curtis Work in the Ohio offense? Not really, but I'm catching 11 points with an offense that I think is pretty hot right now, so I'll do it. Give me Central Michigan plus 11 next game. Buffalo Bulls on the road in Ohio to play Miami. Uh, Red Hawks are laying eight and a half. That number is down from nine and a half. Total sitting at 39 and a half. Public's all over Miami in this one, but there's actually some Buffalo action starting to come in. Action still leaning Miami as a whole, but you can see it start to tilt the other way. And the market reacted to it. Uh, line dropped down from nine and a half down to eight and a half. As far as head to head history here, uh, the home team is actually six and oh in the last six. The last three matchups in Buffalo, the Bulls won. The last three matchups in Ohio, the Red Hawks won. Uh, so if that pattern stays true, Miami of Ohio should win this game. But we're not asking who's going to win. We're asking who's going to cover the number. Well, the story in this one is obviously going to be how can the Buffalo offense score points on this Miami defense? Because they've been insanely good. They've played six conference games on the season. They're allowing just 10.2 points per game and 256 yards per game in those six. They're five and one with their only loss coming at the ends of Toledo. On the season, Miami of Ohio is 30th overall defensively, according to beta rank, 36th in effective rush and 35th in effective pass, which are insanely good marks for a MAC program. Two of the last three Miami games at home in Ohio have been shutouts, including a 27 nothing win over Bowling Green. They shut out Bowling Green, who then went and hung 28 points on Toledo in the first half, who's the best team in the conference. I mean, welcome to Mac football, the land where nothing makes sense. <laughs> nah, but the point I'm making is the Red Hawks defense, Miami's defense truly has been elite. Wanna know where Buffalo sits offensively? 127th overall, 125th in effective rush, and 122nd in effective pass. One of the worst offenses in the FBS. So on paper, Buffalo shouldn't hit double-digit points on the road against Miami here on paper, but again, this is Mac football, so they'll probably score 50. So you might be thinking Miami's got to be the play here, right? I mean, it's the best defense in the conference against one of the worst offenses on the road, uh, but hold on, because on the other side of the ball, things get a bit interesting. Buffalo's defense has been low-key pretty good. Uh, this would be the fourth best defense in the MAC, other than the, the big three on top. They're 43rd overall, according to Beta Rank, 69th in effective rush, and 31st in effective pass. Little worried that they've been stronger against the pass and more vulnerable to the run, though. Uh, because running the ball is exactly what Miami does. They've run the ball in 58.12% of their snaps this season. That's 20th most in the FBS. This is a run first offense all the way. And now that Brett Gabbert's out for the year, their quarterback, um, Avion Smith, he likes to run the ball. So they're going to be running the ball even more. But here's the thing. We haven't seen much production from the Miami offense since Gabbert went down. We've seen two games. And in those two games, since Avion Smith took over at quarterback, 
Miami's averaging just 263 yards per game of offense. They may have won both those games comfortably because of their defense, but you cannot count on a team to keep covering eight, nine, 10 point spreads if you're not moving the football. I mean, you can't, a defense cannot continually cover double digit point spreads without an offense, which is why I'm going to take the points in this one as well. I think the market got this one right, bending that number down from nine and a half to eight and a half. Anything above a touchdown, I'm on the Bulls here. So it's going to be Buffalo plus eight and a half. If you want our top bets for all sports, parlays of the day, uh, or you want to join our Discord, I promise we're going to get hot at some point. I mean, it's been a rough week. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're interested in that, head over to kylecrims.com. The information is right there on the homepage. College football wednesday just a couple of mac games remember to bet these games responsibly because the mac is crazy i mean all college football is crazy but the mac is especially crazy uh, so remember to bet responsibly and i'll talk to you in the discord